viral video, the West needn't hurry, we can end ourselves just fine. Analysis Three major reasons the CCP is reluctant to sell TikTok to Americans. FDA warning, serious safety issues with Chinese-made syringes. Two years after the Eastern Airlines disaster, authorities release investigation report, facing severe criticism. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Viral video, the West needn't hurry, we can end ourselves just fine. On March 15th, mainland media exposed that some merchants produce starch sausages with chicken bone mud instead of chicken meat, and the chicken bone mud sold online is meant for feeding dogs. This report immediately triggered heated discussions in society, with topics such as hashtag starch sausage collapse hashtag trending on search engines, leaving consumers, street vendors, distributors, live stream hosts, and manufacturers feeling vulnerable. The starch sausage scandal is just the tip of the iceberg for China's food safety issues. Following this, a video mocking China's food safety went viral online. The male host in the video joked, actually, the West doesn't need to worry, we can end ourselves just fine, just give it some time. He then listed several unsafe foods that have been exposed, breakfast with nitrite cured sow meat, crossing over to play the big stupid donkey. A few days ago, the media revealed that unscrupulous merchants were making fake donkey meat using sow and horse meat. He also mentioned soy milk flavored with essence, fake Thai jasmine rice sprayed with fragrance, preserved vegetable pork belly made from lymphatic meat, and the herbal jelly used in popular milk tea shops, mocking the quality issues within. A few days ago, the media exposed that the herbal jelly used in popular milk tea shops might be expired, with shops arbitrarily changing the expiration date labels, depending on the staff's taste test. The host also said, for dinner, enjoy hot pot with synthetic beef and mutton, accompanied by formaldehyde duck blood, and drink some special alcohol mixed with ethanol. For supper, have a whole starch sausage, then supplement with some rotten fruits cut from the corners, a whole fruit platter, turning decay into a magical experience. He specifically mentioned the ongoing scandal with starch sausages containing bone mud. Bone mud, the manufacturers have said that stuff is meant for dogs to eat, and it turns out we've been eating dog food all this time. At the end of the video, he jokingly said, Know why there's a pharmacy every 50 meters? Because they're afraid I won't make it to 60 meters. This video resonated with netizens in mainland China, with many commenting, big truth, not an exaggeration at all. Our pharmacies are now 20 meters apart. Analysis Three major reasons the CCP is reluctant to sell TikTok to Americans. The U.S. Congress is passing legislation to divest TikTok from ByteDance. On March 13, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a proposal by an overwhelming majority, demanding that TikTok either be primarily owned by American companies or be banned in the U.S. This proposal is supported by President Joe Biden. On March 14, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Commerce of the CCP claimed at a regular news conference that the U.S. should stop the unreasonable suppression of TikTok and relevant parties should strictly comply with Chinese laws and regulations. The Wall Street Journal reported on the 18th that insiders revealed that some executives at ByteDance believe the spokesperson's remarks reinforced the message from the CCP government to the company that if it attempted to divest TikTok, it would face regulatory obstacles. Previously, a spokesperson for the Ministry of Commerce stated in March last year that the sale or divestiture of TikTok involves technology export issues and must undergo administrative licensing procedures in accordance with Chinese laws and regulations, with the CCP government making the final decision. The report mentioned that as buyers interested in purchasing TikTok's U.S. operations appeared, the CCP government hinted it would not allow a forced sale of TikTok. With 170 million users in the U.S., ByteDance is caught in a dilemma due to the CCP's stance. Insiders indicated that CCP officials also signaled to ByteDance, headquartered in Beijing, that the government would rather see TikTok banned in the U.S. than sold. Within ByteDance, founder Zhang Yiming has not yet indicated any discussions with external buyers regarding the sale of TikTok. Zhang owns a portion of ByteDance shares. 
former U.S. Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin stated on the 18th that he is forming a consortium to attempt to purchase TikTok. Bobby Kotick, former CEO of Activision Blizzard, has conveyed his intention to purchase to Zhang Yiming. However, Dr. Zhang Tianliang, an expert on China issues, analyzed in his self-media channel when dawn breaks that there are three major reasons the CCP prohibits the sale of TikTok. Firstly, the CCP has long propagated so-called nationalism, and selling TikTok under U.S. pressure would be a loss of face. Moreover, setting such a precedent could lead more countries to take action against Chinese companies for national security reasons, pushing related legislation. Secondly, there's a need to conceal TikTok's software algorithms and past logs. He mentioned that TikTok has been reported to have heavily promoted pornographic and drug-related short videos in the past, harming teenagers, which may be one reason the CCP does not want to be discovered. More importantly, many CCP Cyber Army accounts could be unearthed from past logs, including how these accounts coordinated operations, infiltrated the US and Taiwan, pushed information, and influenced public opinion in US and Taiwanese elections. If TikTok were sold to an American company and such data handed over, the US government would also conduct data mining, fully exposing CCP's information warfare tactics. This is what the CCP fears the most and needs to conceal. Lastly, although TikTok might be banned in the US, it isn't banned in other countries, allowing the CCP to continue using TikTok to steal data from these nations. Once sold to the US, the CCP would lose its ability to use TikTok as spyware to mine data from other countries. Dr. Zhang Tianliang stated that the CCP would not sell TikTok because the loss would be much greater than the gain, especially since many matters are unspeakable and not to be known by others. FDA Warning – Serious Safety Issues with Chinese-Made Syringes The U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA, issued a statement on Tuesday, March 19, indicating that the quality issues associated with Chinese-made plastic syringes sold in the United States are more widespread than previously known. Tuesday's statement advised all suppliers of plastic syringes in the U.S., medical institutions, and consumers to immediately cease using unauthorized plastic syringes from Jiangsu Shenli Medical Production Company, Limited. On Monday, March 18, the FDA issued warning letters to three Chinese manufacturers. The warning letters stated that these companies were involved in regulatory violations related to the sale and distribution of Chinese-made plastic syringes in the U.S. without FDA permission or approval. The FDA has raised alarms over safety issues with plastic syringes from China, notably from Jiangsu Shenli Medical Production Company, LTD, which neglected necessary pre-market approvals and made unapproved changes affecting safety and effectiveness. Similar warnings were given to Medline Industries, LP, a major U.S. medical supplies distributor, and Seoul Millennium Medical Incorporated, for not adhering to quality regulations. Jiangsu Kina Medical Company LTD is also under scrutiny for syringes failing performance tests, showing inexplicable malfunctions. The FDA's concern highlights that some Chinese-made syringes might not meet quality or performance standards, urging the use of syringes manufactured elsewhere when possible. Following reports of malfunctions like leaks, breaks, and foreign objects in syringes, the FDA has been on high alert. Issues also include needle breaks during vaccinations and fast, incorrect medication delivery due to pump malfunctions. Zhang Sushinli and Seoul Millennium produce from McKesson Corporation, a large pharmaceutical and healthcare IT company in Texas, with other Chinese firms also involved. Both Cardinal Health and Fresenius Medical Care have had to recall their syringes due to these quality concerns. Two years after the Eastern Airlines disaster, authorities release investigation report, facing severe criticism. On March 21, 2022, flight MU5735 crashed in Tang County, Wuzhou, Guangxi, killing all 132 people on board and resulting in severe fragmentation of the aircraft. This incident is the deadliest air disaster in mainland China in 28 years. On April 2 of the same year, a seven-person team from the United States National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, 
arrived in China to participate in the investigation into the cause of the Eastern Airlines disaster, aiming to understand what happened in the final minutes before the crash. By that time, both of the aircraft's black boxes had been recovered. Before the black boxes were decoded, a leaked article circulated online, revealing a supposed last note from the flight's co-pilot, Zhang Jingping. The last note contained two main parts. One part accused Eastern Airlines leadership of persecuting Zhang Jingping and former Yunnan Airlines employees, stating that the bureaucratic system treated them unjustly, including demoting Zhang from a meritorious pilot to co-pilot. The other part criticized Xi Jinping for not understanding economics, ruining the foundation of reform and opening up, and making the economy worse. It also mentioned Zhang investing his life savings in Evergrande real estate through a relative, leading to significant financial loss making him feel no longer wanting to live. The article that exposed Zhang Jingping's last note suggested that Zhang crashed the plane deliberately. It described how, during the flight, Zhang suddenly plunged the aircraft from an altitude of over 8,000 meters. The captain, Yang Hongda, tried to regain control, but Zhang's actions forced the plane to dive again, ultimately causing the disaster. A former mainland airline employee, now living in the U.S. under the pseudonym Chang Su, confirmed that the accusations in the note about Eastern Airlines' leadership exploiting employees were accurate. He said, Eastern Airlines is like a microcosm of today's Chinese society, where the exploitation of the lower class, employees, by the privileged class is evident and nothing new. The Evergrande crisis indeed devastated the lives of many people in mainland China. Two years after the Eastern Airlines crash, the long-awaited official report finally arrived but disappointed many by listing everything as no problem without addressing the main cause of the crash. Online comments highlighted the report's lack of concrete information, with people sarcastically questioning everything from the report's thoroughness to suggesting absurd theories for the crash. They pointed out the report's failure to mention anything substantial, especially regarding the mental health of the crew, which many inferred as the real issue. The general sentiment was frustration, with many feeling that the report was more about avoiding blame than revealing the truth. Some comments joked about everything being fine except for the plane apparently choosing to crash itself, while others remarked on the investigation's efforts to clear any involved parties of responsibility, suggesting a cover-up of the actual cause. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths.